Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to go through how I sculpted the head for my Irish Wolfhound commission. The rest of the uh, video for the doll will be up next week. But if you want to see how I sculpted this little dude, then keep watching. So I normally start off with a tin foil um, core. It means that the sculpture can be uh, a lot lighter than using a solid uh, sculpey um, sculpture, especially if you're doing bigger pieces. So it's always good to have something to go in into the core of the um, of the head. So I'm using Sculpey Original for this sculpt. I like sculpting with Sculpey Sculpey Original. Um, I mainly like the softer texture of that that clay but you can get super sculpy and sculpy firm if you want something a bit harder but I personally like sculpting with uh, softer clays so I'm just basically building up all of the areas that need to be built up to create the head <laughs> um, so I'm starting off just sort of roughing out where the snout's going to be, where the eyes are going to be and um, comparing it to my um, reference photos over on my computer. So if you're sculpting something, it's always good to have reference photos up uh, somewhere, whether it's um, a drawing or a picture or a printed picture or a book, anything. Um, but it's always good to have some reference um, references. So I'm happy with the snout the way it's looking I guess and I could start working on the positioning of the eyes so for these eyes I use cabochons for uh, my dolls so you can either make them buy them or anything like that uh, these ones I've made they're only little little tiny ones so I'm basically sculpting out an eye socket if that makes sense so I'm just using like little worms that will um, that will become the, the eye's eye socket because uh, as they're cabochons, they're not round. So the cabochon needs something flat to sit on. Um, so I usually build up an eye socket for the cabochon to sit on. And you can see I'm just placing it in the little indentation that I've made using those little snake things. Uh, and they fit nicely in there. Uh, you can always sculpt it and move it around. Uh, you just want to make sure that the positioning of the eyes is symmetrical and also the angle so sometimes it can be a little a little off um, so just just play around with it and make sure it's all symmetrical and the angles are right once I'm happy with the positioning I can uh, then start creating the uh, the eyes or the eyelids and stuff so I usually do that by sculpting a uh, little worm and just going around the eyes that way the eye stays in place and then you can start sculpting all the little details that you find in eyes <laughs> Um, and then also doing the eyebrow areas and the lower eyelid areas as well. So once that's uh, sculpted and roughed in, I start working on the nose. So the Irish Wolfhound has quite a little, a, a big nose. So I just started off sculpting a rough shape of a nose and then I can start incorporating it into the snout. And again, checking with my reference photos that it's in the right position. So I just slowly put, uh, mold it into the rest of the clay, work it in and uh, make a basic shape of what the nose will look like. If you need it to be flat, you can press it down like I did just then. Um, and then I'll go in with my tools and start refining it a little bit more. So I use a, a needle tool to just sort of take away any um, clay that I think doesn't need to be there. And then I use a small ball tool for the nostrils. And you can get the, the ball tools um, anywhere online. You can get cheap ones or you can get ones from the brand Sculpey. Uh, the ones from Sculpey come in a pack of three and it has tools on the end of the, uh, the ball tool as well. So I like to use them for making um, making little nostrils or any other little holes. Uh, this is the smallest one that you get in the pack. Uh, the other ones are obviously a medium size and the other ones are a large size. Um, probably good for eye sockets and stuff like that, the large one would be. Um, so basically I'm just working uh, the little nose nostril areas, uh, just making sure to keep it round and symmetrical again and then I can use my needle tool to go in and create that little 
thing <laughs> on the side of of the nose I don't know what it's called but you know how they have a little gap on the side of the nose so I go in with my needle tool and just sort of carve it out like so uh, making sure it's all uh, incorporated as well uh, going back with my ball tool and just incorporate incorporating that sculpty Then I can move on to the lower jaw. I never really sculpt the lower jaw at the same time as the snout. I just like to get the snout done first uh, and then I can go ahead and add a lower jaw. So I usually do it by, like you saw there, with a piece of clay, just roughly sculpting out the actual um, the lower part and the shape. And then I can go ahead and plop it on and start um, incorporating it again into the rest of the clay. Uh, you can always carve it out a little bit more. Uh, there's no right or what wrong way of doing these um, the, the, the lower jaw. You can do it all at once if you like. I just prefer to do it this way. I can get some better lines um, when I do it this way. Uh, but doing it this way, I usually uh, then go back to my uh, upper jaw area and create some more like little lips and stuff like that. Uh, so usually you end up losing some of the detailing from the, the top of the jaw when you add the lower one. So I like to go back in and add some more of the lip area, <laughs> if that makes sense. So once I have uh, added all of the details I want to the lip area, I can start combining it again into the rest of the Sculpey and then I'll start refining it a bit more uh, using a rake tool and that means I'm able to again further re refine the way the snout looks. So if you start adding clay, sometimes it ends up looking a bit bulky or it loses shape or anything like that, but that's easy fix by using your rake tool to shave um, the bits that you don't like down. Uh, now I use a tool with just a little loop on it. There's a lot of different rake tools that you can get. Um, you can make them out of piano wire or anything like that. Um, I plan to make a video one day on doing that. Um, but I have just this little loop tool. It's got two different shaped loops on it and um, this one's come in really, really handy. I got it from Barnes here in, in Melbourne um, a long time ago now, but you can easily make your own with a bit of wire and a steel tube. Uh, and I just go ahead and subtract all of that clay that I don't think matches and just m further refining the top of the snout and also the bottom of the snout area. So I can start uh, building up the eye area now and uh, any of the bones that I think need to be there uh, and I do that by just adding some clay and working it around uh, the, the actual sculpt. So at this point I wasn't happy with the way the eyes were sitting uh, so I just quickly poked them out and then I can um, just redo where I want the eyes to do to go and you don't have to redo the whole thing because your eye sockets have already been sculpted you just need to sort of work it around a little bit and create a new little eye socket for your capuchons to sit so I wanted them a little bit closer I thought the eyes were a bit too far apart um, so I, I repositioned them and made sure they were both symmetrical and on the same angle so much happier with the way the eyes are positioned now and then again going through that whole same process of building up the eyelids with the worms looking things <laughs> and uh, just refining the um, all the details that are around an eye socket.
Alright, so now for the ears. So Irish Wolfhounds have floppy ears. So I actually haven't made a doll with a floppy ear before. So this was something a little bit different. Or not that I remember I've made one. Um, so what I did was rolled out two balls of clay that were the same size. And then I started uh, building that shape over my thumb. So the ears had to be a bit thinner. So I just pressed it out and made sure that were, they were roughly the same shape as well. And then I could further refine it once the ears were on the actual head um, but I mean there's different ways that you can do it I found this way works the best um, and then I could sort of pinch the clay together and create any any more details that you find on a dog I guess So you want to make sure that the ears are symmetrical as well. Uh, they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical because not everything is, um, but you want to be roughly similar, I guess, or shooting in the same ballpark. <laughs> um, and then once I've got them on, I can then start refining the way uh, the, sh the ear looks. I can uh, cut off some clay like I did here. I, I ended up trimming it off because I thought the ears were a little bit too long and a bit too big. Uh, and also the wrong shape so I just used my broken broken Stanley knife <laughs> and um, just cut them off this blades really blunt so it's uh, quite good for soft clay um, just be careful if you're using a sharp blade so once you're happy with the way that is you can start adding any little details now I'm not being too super pedantic about uh, how smooth this is or where I'm putting any any details because I will be covering it in clay so you don't need to be too careful you don't need to be uh, super careful about making sure everything is um, smooth and detailed if you aren't putting faux fur on it uh, definitely go ahead and do all of the detailing to your best um, as you will obviously you see what you can see so, uh, but for this one, I'm going to be adding faux fur, so I don't need to be too careful about all of the details that are um, that are, that are on there. So that's pretty much the uh, progress of uh, sculpting this head. Uh, thanks to my patrons for supporting me. I, I really do appreciate it. You can check it out below in the link uh, description box. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.